Hey everyone, B Asian Day here. Today we're going to look into Videl Latitude 5401. Now this is a 14 inch notebook and it is more designed for the business range so it's got none of those frills of nice looking sort of things. It's very clean and slick. Now this is one of their new models for 2019 and they've done some massive changes since 5491. Now don't get the 5401 confused with the 5400. That's also new as well. Uh, there is one major difference between the 5400 and the 5401. The 5401 runs off the ninth generation Intel processors, whereas the 5400 runs off the eighth generation Intel processors. So the 5401 comes in two flavors. So you get the i5 and the i7s. Now the i5s come with four cores and the i7s comes with six cores. So it can crunch some, some serious numbers there. Now you can configure these ones up to 32 gigs of RAM and they are using two DIMM slots. So it is pretty upgradable if you get using only one, but you can go all the way up to 32 gigs of RAM, which is pretty sweet. And you can go up to one terabyte of SSD. Now that is also slot base of M.2. So you can upgrade that later on as well too. Now as for the graphics, the i5 uses the integrated Intel 630 graphics. Now if you've chosen the i7 route for the CPU, you can opt in for a discrete graphics, which is the Nvidia GeForce MX150. So looking back at the display here, it is a 14 inch full HD screen. So that means it can do a resolution of 1920 by 1080. And you can get a touch, a non-touch version of the screen. And of course you can get the matte screen or you can get a glass screen as well, which is the glossy feel. Now all flavors of the screen is 220 nits of brightness. Now with the bezel, they've actually made it a lot more narrow now compared to the old previous model, the 5491. So it looks pretty decent. This whole new design is pretty sweet, I think. Now as for the weight of this notebook, you're looking at 1.53 kilograms. So they shaved a little bit uh, of weight with this new model here. Besides shaving the weight, they've also shaved the dimension of this computer here. So this is the 54, new 5401, and I've pretty much got the 5491 right here. This is the old previous model, which this has replaced. And pretty much when you put them back to back, you'll see it's actually a lot more smaller. So this one actually, the 5401, seems to be more like a 13 inch compared to a 14 inch dimension there. Got the 5491 on the left hand side and we got the 5401 on the right hand side. So they're pretty much nearly the same. Let's have a look at the ports here. So on the left hand side here, we've got the exhaust fan. We've got a USB 3.1, USB C type. Now this is Thunderbolt enabled. And we've got your AC barrel type. Now along the back, there is nothing. It's pretty clear of that. And we've, on the right hand side, we've got the security lock. We've got RJ45 Ethernet and that's a lever system. It's great to see that Dell have kept the RJ45 connection for business. We've got the HDMI port. We've got two USB 3.1s and the one on the right is the PowerShare USB. We've got the audio combo jack. We've got a micro SD card reader. Down here is the USIM for SIM cards. And that's pretty much about it. Now there is an optional fingerprint reader on this computer and they've actually integrated it with the power button. This particular model hasn't got it, but you can opt in for it. Dell has included a 720p webcam on this. Now with this new models, they've actually included privacy shutters for the webcam, which is really nice. So it's just a built-in shutter and it's got a little lever. So it's just a matter of giving a nice little flick to it and you'll see the webcam will go red which means the webcam is turned off and you can't accidentally turn it on so it's actually physically covered it up so you don't need the electrical tape or the blue tack anymore which is fantastic now you can get ir cameras for these so it can actually help you with facial recognitions to actually log into the computer as well now that's another option that you can actually put into these computers 
As for the keyboard, it's a little different to the previous model, so they've changed it. So it's got a much more nicer, smoother feel to it. I think they've got a little bit more defined separation between the keys as well. As for travel wise, it's about the same as the previous model for travel wise of the individual keys. And I also find the keys maybe a little bit smaller, more a little bit more compact. Only probably about they probably shave maybe micrometers off this keyboard. Just for me, I feel that it feels a little bit smaller each individual key. But as for typing wise, it still feels a little bit more really defined for myself. And I still feel it very nice to work on. Now Dell has also included one of those track points in the key middle of the keyboard. I've known it as the G-Spot or the keyboard nipple as some people have called it. And that's this one here, which is basically to use for the move the mouse itself. Uh, and it's more really an old thing for the touch typist. Now you also have three buttons below the space key and that's for the left and right and the scroll for using the track point. As for the trackpad, the size is pretty much the same as the previous model, but I find the surface of it is a little bit more smoother than the previous model. I kind of like it. My finger glides nicer over this one, and it's still got the two physical buttons below for left and right clicks. A lot of people don't realize there's a lot of gestures for Windows 10 that they've built into the trackpad. Now, I've created a separate video for that, and I'll put a link in the description if you wish to actually check that out. Now, as for the touch and feel of this new 5401 it has a more style feel case like more like the precision series uh, it's got a more of a smoother feel to it than previous where it's got more rougher plastic sort of feel to it and along at the back it's still the same old plastic sort of feel to it so it can take a fair bit of beating as well too let's just check how easy it is just to lift the lid with one finger it does pretty well so you can lift it up with one finger it's pretty nice Let's just check how far the lid can go back. It will do 180 degrees and that's as far back as it can go. So yeah, 180 degrees is all it can do. Now this notebook that I've got here, which is the i5 version, it comes with a 90 watt power supply. With the i7, you can opt in to have the larger one, which is the 130 watt power supply. And that's because it requires it for the discrete graphics in there. Now Dell has put a four cell battery into the 5401 and it does have express charge which means it can charge the battery up to 80% in one hour's time. Now with my testing I actually charge from 0 to 100 takes an average around about two hours time and that also depends on your ambient temperature. Now um, I was around about 26 degrees Celsius so if it's more hotter it does take a little bit longer and it's more, again more cooler it does take a little bit longer as well. And as for the battery life when I boosted up the CPU to 100% you're looking at one hour and 20 minutes is what you'll probably get at, out of this machine. Now when you're just doing your average use and saving and with all the screen brightness at 50% you're looking at up to about seven hours so anywhere between one hour 20 to seven hours is what you expect for the battery life of this computer now i did test out the sound of this computer and i pretty much just use a decibel meter app on my mobile phone and i put it around about 10 centimeters away from the computer itself and it pretty much measured at a peak of 99 decibels so it's pretty loud this actual computer as for the sound quality it's pretty average it doesn't have it's not that crazy bassy and the speakers are located in the front bottom and so you kind of get a little bit of surround sound feel to it it's just your decent sort of speakers enough to work with now we're going to color calibrate the built-in screen with the spider 3 pro unfortunately that's i've had this for a number of years and it's been pretty trustworthy for me and i haven't got the funds to actually upgrade it but maybe i'll set up a donation fund later on the Spider 3 Pro has finished the calibration of the screen and this is what it looks like when it comes out of factory before calibration and this is what it looks like after. Before calibration, after calibration, before, after. Now with my eyes I can see, so before and after, so what I can see is that the before, when it comes out of factory, it is a little bit more green and tinged to it and it's a little bit more cooler as well. So after it's calibrated, it's a little bit more magenta 
and they've warmed it up a little bit but it's actually not too bad from a lot of other screens I've seen so this is doing pretty pretty well now if you find this very useful put a comment below I'd love to hear if this is very useful for you and if you enjoyed it give it a like as well too it would be fantastic to to hear from you while stress testing and benchmarking the computer I did take note of the temperature and the sound of this computer how loud this computer gets with its fan running on so what I found doing after an hour of having the CPU running for a hundred percent I did take note of where the heat was the exhaust fan is located on the left hand side of the computer and it goes runs along between the control and caps key so that's where most of the heat will be feel to itself now as for when you're touching the computer when this computer is running hot it is pretty much within those three keys you're looking at the control shift and caps lock key now what I did use is I just use a food for monitor that's all I really got and pretty much put it on there for five minutes to let it settle itself and I took my mobile phone app to measure at 10 centimeters away and pretty much where the exhaust fan was it measured at 39.4 degrees Celsius with it averaging around about 61 decibels now when I measured the food for monitor where between the caps and shift key was it measured at 34.5 degrees Celsius and and again 61 decibels so it's actually quite touchable and when you actually put your palm properly you won't actually normally feel that sort of heat on you so it's actually very very usable computer so they've actually done very well for the thermal design of this computer good on you Dale as for the normal operation of this computer when it's not under stress test so you're looking around about between 10 to 50 percent CPU usage you're looking at 30.6 degrees Celsius at 51 decibel and that's measured at where around about the caps keys is so again very usable and very quiet as well as when it's operating now if you enjoyed the video or find it informative give it a like and if you haven't done already subscribe to the channel by hitting that subscribe channel or even just to support me but i do try to upload a new video every tuesdays and fridays and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting i'll see you next video